um, this is our scaffolding thing. So our topic, so the, the, general, the general prompt was like, you pick a topic. Now that we have our Manta stuff, this is gonna be your topic. So you have your first draft of your initial sort of thoughts. And now what I want you, what you're gonna turn in is a one page write up for this, the thing you'll actually upload. So it'll be this, the thing you've written, and then plus whatever this new sample you're gonna generate. You just set, you, just, you know, say, you know, first draft and then paste that in and then, you know, new page and, and then do the stuff you're gonna generate, okay? So again, the idea here is can I help you guys um, with the writing process, particularly with the early phases of the writing process, right? So um, now when we do this stuff, I'm gonna ask you, hey guys, tell me about this topic. Now we've done some reading on them. In the case of our manta ray uh, tourism industry study thing, right? You guys, are, you guys have a little bit of insight. We have some data now. But you haven't read the literature on, on, man, on you know, elasma brank ecotourism, right? So we're kind of starting out. So there's some tools that can help us jumpstart stuff. Again, this is not to replace your original work. This is to help you with stuff. You always must apply your brain to what comes out of these, these tools, right? Do not trust what they are. Okay, uh, just on face value. Okay, so there's various things. So um, the first one is to help you craft a thesis statement. You're, you've already, and you can, you can run through this all on your own, but we've already done a little bit of that ourselves, right? We've looked at the data. You guys have started to say, hey, this is interesting. I wonder if this is happening. Is tourism going up? Is it, is it more costly or whatever it is? Okay, so I'm gonna, sk I'm gonna jump to the next thing. So this little video, if you hit play, this will sort of run you through really quickly all the different tools. Um, so this first one, this first page is just uh, is just a little bit of maybe some funny things here to get you going, um, and then how how we sort of write a research paper kind of stuff, and then this page is basically onboarding. So these are the tools that we'll use, and so I want you to go through these steps. So starting from this assignment on, I want you all to be building your own bibliographic database. I'm showing you Zotero. Zotero works with all these products that I, I show you next. But if you have a favorite um, existing, uh, if you're using EndNote or some other product, you, you're more than welcome to keep using that. But the idea is I don't want you manually handwriting references down, right? I want you to throw your references in this tool and then have this tool help you organize them. Whenever we start a new tool, it takes a few minutes to learn. And the answer is, oh, Dr. I'll just type it in. Don't be a dumbass, right? Yes, I get you can type it in this first time, but I am working on trying to save you years of your life in your career and stuff, right? So let's get familiar with these tools. Yes, the first time or two, it's gonna take you an extra 20 minutes, half hour to figure it out, and you're gonna do it wrong the first time. Yes, but then, then once you've learned it, it's gonna be a massive time saver. And it'll prevent errors. The other big thing that happens almost all the time when you manually write in your reference, you're gonna type the wrong page number and it's just, it's just gonna be problems. Okay, so, so take a few minutes and you learn. If you've not already committed to a tool, go ahead and use Zotero. But, but Zotero plays well with these other tools that we're gonna play with and it's, it's free and it's open source. Again, all of these things, let me just remind you, all of these things you should not pay any money for. They all have, or almost all of them, have an option for the pro version or the whatever, right? If you decide this is a useful tool and you'd like to explore that, that's fine. You do not need to spend any money on any of these tools. Just want to make sure I emphasize that because some of them kind of do little, some tricky things sometimes and imply that you have to do this. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna sign up for these things and all that and, and all this kind of good stuff and we run through these tools. Okay, so let's... Okay, so here's our exercise. Okay, so this is the, 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 the process that I'm suggesting you guys follow. This is the process I follow and most of us follow when we're doing a research project. The first thing is we figure out what is our topic? What, 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 what's the purpose of this study? What are we trying to explore, right? And so I have a chatbot, the Marlow chatbot that should help you craft that. In this case, you already, you already have it, at least the, the core one, right? Everybody should have it. Um, you're welcome to try that out to see, you know, if you wanted to refine yours or something, but, but that's basically just about helping you figure out what a good thesis statement is. Okay, so let's, so let's assume we have that. Now, let's, our next tool is this one called Consensus. So Consensus is a tool to help you um, explore the literature, right? Now, 
back in the day, how this worked was I would go to the library and I'd say, uh, uh, sharks or something, or shark tourism, or elasmobranch tourism. And I would go and I would, I would look at the journals that were physically sitting on the shelves and I would kind of look to the, the appendix or, or the table of contents and scan, see if there's anything there. Probably not, then I have to go to the card catalog and search for like, you know, do all that. Now that stuff's all electronic. That's still a key step, right? But um, what I'm trying to do here is to help you jumpstart that step. Again, not to do the work for you, but to ease. Right now, you're all naive. You do not understand about manta rays, right? The old process is you go get a bunch of papers, you read a bunch of papers, and then and you read those, and then they point you to other papers, and they point, which is great, but that can take a lot of time, right? There's value in that, but that can take a lot of time. This is a way to help us jumpstart. This will not replace you looking at these papers and skimming these papers and reading these papers. But especially when we start, where do I start? I don't know. Is this the right paper? Is this a lame paper? Should I not be doing that? So that's what I'm trying to help you with here to, to get fast. So let's go to consensus, which is my first one. And, um, and so now I've, all, I've logged on and everything, so, so it's all good. So, right, so I can ask questions here. I can either say, I could say, say something about um, uh, 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 shark tourism or something, right? I can start something like that and just say this topic, and it's going to look through the primary literature, and it's going to go, ah, here's a paper on shark reef marine reserves, right? And then I can use these tools to, to do stuff. In this case, Copilot is going to sort of do a summary for me. Let's leave that off for the time being. And so it's just going to show me these, these papers, right? I can then decide if these papers look interesting, if they don't look interesting, right? Uh, I can decide, uh, and, and, and I can, I can uh, and it also helps me with a few things. So check it out. Look, at right here, this says highly cited. If I just go to the library database and, and found the same paper, it would tell me the paper. But it wouldn't tell me if a lot of other people think this is an important study that they cited. Okay, that's one. Um, uh, I can grab it, I, I, I can save it, and which is what I recommend is you guys save it to a list, and then once you have a list, you could throw it into Zotero, and then from Zotero, you can bring it to our next things. So you can start to play around with this stuff, right? And it can start to, and, and so you can say, oh my gosh, so if I'm just starting, to, if I'm starting into a field and there's 50 papers, sure, it'd be great to read all 50 papers, right? We don't all have the time for that. But more importantly, maybe all those 50 papers aren't great. Maybe there's really five that are really, really important that you should read. And then there's maybe, if you have time, there's this other one over here. But how do I get to that? That's the part that this will help you with, right? Sort of helping us see the relationships, how other people are, are doing stuff. The other cool thing this will do is we could say something like um, have shark Pop, let me do something different. Let's first try Google, right? Which is what a lot of folks that don't know how to do real research will do. They'll say, have shark populations declined in recent years? The global abundance of sharks has declined, says this one thing. And then it's like, oh, I'm going to click this. And then it's alarming decline, half a century global decline. OK. And, and there's some stuff here. And this may well be right. This may be correct. But it's going to point me to this, whoever is highest in the search. right? It's not going to point me to who's at the highest data quality. It's going to point me who has the most links to there, the most popular social media or something like that. right? OK, so let's jump back to my consensus. Have shark populations declined, or let me, let, me say, let me say it this way, shark populations have declined in recent years. Thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. Now, this is going to primarily draw from peer-reviewed literature, right? Not, not, not only, but primarily. Okay, so this is starting to give me some references. Okay, all that kind of. I also can say have shark 
populations declined in recent years? It's very exciting waiting for the answer. And check it out. So now it's giving me right here a consensus, right? Of it found 15 papers that seem to specifically look at this question. And it's telling, you know, so not all, uh, you know, so, so one paper or, or at least 7% of the stuff said, no, they have not. But 93% of the paper said, yes, shark populations have declined, right? So as we're starting to get into a topic, this is really, really helpful, right? Now I kinda, I, I'm starting to get my arms around the subject here. You know, it, it is, is shark ecotourism benefiting local communities, right? Now sometimes maybe there, there's not good literature there, which will happen. But where there is literature, this will help us in that initial cutting through. Does that make sense? So this is consensus, and then we can spit all this stuff out. And then one last one I wanna show you real quick. The next one, which is, Research Rabbit. So Research Rabbit is a really useful tool, especially for those of us that are visual learners. Visual learners, okay? So um, now I can, this one you really, you need to start with some stuff. So it really helps. So let's say we found four or five papers that we liked a lot from consensus. Grab those. And a lot of those are open source, but not all. So you might eventually have to go get the paper from the library because it might, might not be easily grabbable off the web. But still, you at least have the reference. You at least have the abstract, the title, et cetera, right? So you're gonna have your list of a handful of references that you can use to support your arguments. And then uh, I'll just use one I already have open here. Uh, let's see, where's one? Uh, Turkish biodiversity, let's do that one. Okay, so I've gone in and I've, I've uploaded some references, right? And then I have all these things. And what does this look like? I don't know what's going on, but check it out. So maybe I found five references and I want to find a few more. Now I can do, say something like, tell me about similar work. And I can click on this. And it gives me a map of all these papers. It gives me a map of the papers that I have in my library and papers that aren't in my library. And it shows me how they're related. So the size of the bubble says how many, how many uh, you know, things are referenced in there. And then the line talks about who references this paper. So as we're starting to figure out this, this topic, again, rather than you spending several weeks reading all the literature, which would be great to do if we had the time, we don't have the time, you can jump, you can, you can hopscotch along, right? So it looked like, oh my God, this looks like an important paper. This beer bin, like a lot of people are citing that, right? Um, like this paper out here is not, eh, maybe, you know, it might be an interesting paper, but it's not central. So as I'm starting my literature review, as I'm starting my gathering my evidence, I'm going to jump to these ones that everybody seemed to say are important because other researchers have decided those are important, right? And so it's not just some random paper, but it clearly has some amount of value or some, some important insight that can, that can support my claim or whatever. Does that make sense? So that's what I want you guys to do for the thing that will be due um, next week for this. Wait, is it due next week or do I have it due? To, I think I have it due tomorrow. So. Yeah, for the mandate. When do I have it due? Okay, so then, so then uh, let's have it due tomorrow. Let's, do, let's just do five references. So I said do 10, just have five references. So what I want you to do is, is you're going to give me your thing, and then a maximum of one page. Tell me about manta ray ecotourism. That's the... That's the prompt. You can take it. So if you're more interested in the financial part, you can do that. If you're, if you're interested in more is it supporting local communities, you can do that. If you're worried about ecological impacts, you can use our data. So, so use some of our insights from the Big Island, but create a one-page overview of this topic, right? And with these tools, this is probably about an hour's worth of work, right? This is not days and days and days and days of stuff that I'm trying to ask you guys to do, right? Submit it um, uh, by tomorrow, and, uh, and, and we'll see. We'll go from there, okay? So if there's a problem with these tools, let me know, because we haven't done this right. So if there's a problem, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you. But that's, that's the goal. So the goal is to write this up. So, so you already have your draft write up. Do, and, and, and it could just be what you submit could just be an expansion of your existing paragraph. But I want you to have at least five peer-reviewed references supporting whatever your thesis is. 
Is that cool? Make sense? Okay. It might take a little bit longer this first time just because maybe you have to sign into these tools and get them up and, up and going, but, but the hope is that this is a, a time saver for you guys. My, my intention is, is to make things easier for you and more straightforward. Also, if you're not used to writing sort of like a literature review or a research paper or whatever, you know, do spend some time going through all those steps that I gave you. And the intention is for, for you, if you're, if you're not used to this, the idea is showing you guys how to do a research paper. What we've, the challenge I've had in the last couple of years, I, I'll give you guys a write-up and because you're maybe not used to doing this, people get lost in the details or lost in the logistics. The idea here is I'm trying to give you the scaffolding to do the logistics and you can just focus on the intellectual content. But if something is missing or wrong, I want to hear about it and you guys tell me and we can, we can revise our, our, our steps or whatever next week. Cool? Okay. Uh, that's all I have for you today, except for one last thing to give out, which is um, I, I, I started to give these out last week and then we, because stuff got delayed. So we're also going to start talking about our public opinion poll, which is our first big activity. Um, and so what I want you guys to do for this first step is um, b by next week, fill this out, have filled this out. Actually, I'm going to give you guys two. I'm going to give everybody two. So you can have uh, a random person uh, take this, right? And, uh, and you take it. And so one, I want to talk about your experience and then, and then we'll see how they, how they do it. Um, and so I know we haven't talked about most of these subjects yet and that's totally fine. And so you're, you're going you're gonna, to um, uh, you're gonna take it naively yourself the first time. Um, and so you'll have your data and you'll have uh, somebody else's data. Um, uh, don't use your roommate, somebody other than the person you live with, right? So, so uh, and, and we'll see how this goes. By Tuesday or Thursday? Tuesday. And so, but what we're going to talk about it on Tuesday. We're going to talk about it on Tuesday. And so um, the idea here is if you notice, so this is our first draft. So if you notice any problems or errors, right, we want to catch it before we start getting into the full instructions and the full everything else. Um, also, we haven't talked about these questions, so you might look at them and they might be confusing to you. Great. I mean, I know I'm not great that you're confused, but, but that's sort of the purpose, right? So I want you to be the first guinea pig, right? So you guys do this. So you get to see what it's like when random Joe Blow person takes this for you. Um, but but bring, those, bring yours and the ones you got somebody else to do to class on Tuesday. So we'll also talk about some of the other logistics about entering them and how we do that kind of stuff. Cool. And, and have a... And, and, yeah, anyway, yeah. And so if there's anything funky about it, if you notice there's a typo or anything weird, just on your version, just highlight it or circle it so we can update it and fix it uh, next week. And, and there's one other thing which is, uh, which will come on the module next week, which is human subjects training. So just so you guys know, the way we're safe and the way we're not being um, a jerk to, to people and, and uh, it, there, there's, you know, let's be honest, there's no danger of this. People are like, I don't wanna take it. That's like the dangerous thing, right? It's not a danger. Because other academic researchers have done bad things with, with people, um, intentionally misled them and caused all kinds of issues, um, we have to go through a, a procedure to make sure that we're not hurt. Again, this is, there's, we're not paying people, there's no whatever, uh, but um, with the survey. Uh, but nevertheless, the pro procedure is still, if we do anything with people, we need to go through the safety training. And so one of the activities for next week is for you to do your human subjects training. There's instructions how to do this. You have to go online and, and, and listen to a webinar, basically. At the end of that, there'll be a certificate. Save that certificate. Either take a screenshot of it or save the PDF at the end. And the assignment is to just upload your, your human subjects training thing into the Google Drive. So just so you know, that, that, that's something we have to do before we really get into this fully. So I'll let you guys do that. And, and again, most of those things are not things we're doing. It's about like withholding medical treatment from people or intentionally scaring them. Or it's like that's, that's not this. But we're still caught under the umbrella of making sure that we're not doing something untoward. Cool?